sooner or later, when we start talking about energy that we use in our lives, we, we almost always end up talking about efficiency or how well we use that energy and how much we actually waste. I can remember back to when I was a kid, my sister got a Kenner Easy Bake Oven, and, and here's one here. They're collector's items now. But uh, how she cooked her food, and, and this little oven would make muffins and things like that, and how it did it, you might get a hint in here, it actually used uh, an incandescent light bulb. Because as it turns out, incandescent light bulbs actually generate a tremendous amount of heat uh, compared to the amount of light that they make. So if you look at this chart here, you can see that we have a choice in different kinds of light bulbs these days. Here's the old-fashioned standard incandescent. Uh, they're very, very cheap. But uh, if you take a look at this chart here and see how much wattage, uh, which is a measurement of power, if you see how much power they consume on your electricity bill compared to how much light they make, and light is measured in units called lumens, you can see that uh, compared to other things like uh, even a halogen uh, incandescent or a CFL, now that means a coiled fluorescent light. These are the ones that have the, the weird coils in them. Uh, or compared to the newer ones that you see these days, the LEDs or the light emitting diodes, you can see that uh, these guys, especially these LEDs, look for uh, for a mere eight watts. You could make as much light as a 40 watt uh, incandescent bulb. You can put out 450 lumens. And so the logical thing to do, obviously, is if you want to save money, get a more efficient light bulb. Uh, working for you. Change the ones you have in your house and obviously uh, since power costs money if you use more efficient light bulbs uh, you're going to save money in the long run. Now they may be uh, more expensive to buy initially but they'll probably pay for themselves many times over during their lifetime. Well as you might have guessed we've got a way to calculate efficiency and, and here you go. If you want to calculate your percent efficiency, so this is a percent here, you take the useful energy or work output, in other words, what the machine does, measured in joules, because energy is measured in joules, you divide it by the input, also measured in joules, and you times it by 100%. Now, here's what you need to understand. Since no engine can be 100% efficient, you're always going to find out that the output is always less, and the input is always more. You're always going to end up, when you do this division, you're going to end up with a decimal number. When you multiply that decimal by 100% and move that decimal two places, you are going to get your percentage out of that one. Well, I guess the best way to see this thing in action is to, is to, to do a few. In lifting a car, the total mechanical energy input of a hydraulic hoist is 5.61 times 10 to the fourth joules, while the useful mechanical energy output is 1.96 times 10 to the fourth joules. Uh, calculate the percent efficiency of the hoist. So what happens here is the input and the output don't match. We're going to have a percent of efficiency. Here's the calculation. The, uh, the percent of efficiency is equal to basically the output of the machine divided by its input. And whatever that is, times it by 100%. All right, so, so let's put in our numbers here. It says in, in our description here, um, that uh, down here it says the output is 1.96 times 10 to the fourth. So here we go, 1.96 times 10 to the fourth joules. That's the output. Divide that by the input. So it says the input is here. It's uh, 5.61 times 10 to the fourth joules. And whatever that works out to be has got to be multiplied by 100%. Okay, so calculator time. We're going to take. 1 decimal uh, 96 second function ee fourth power and we're going to divide that by 5 decimal 61 second function ee fourth power and what do we get okay we get 0 0.34 nine three seven six what well, yada 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 and and that's going to be times by one hundred percent now notice that the joules cancel out here okay well you know times you by a hundred percent that's so easy all you've got to do is move the decimal point two places like I wouldn't even bother multiplying by a hundred I mean come on move it two places you get thirty four decimal nine three seven six one one yada yeah, yeah, percent uh, okay obviously this number can't go on forever if we look back on our data we've only got three significant digits 
So we're going to have to cut this off at 3. So I would recommend that we would call this 34.9% efficient, and we're done. A small electric motor has an efficiency of 85%. So in this case, they're going to give us the efficiency. In lifting a small load, it produces 15 joules of mechanical energy input. Calculate the useful mechanical energy output. So we're back to our basic equation here. The percent of efficiency is equal to the output divided by the input and multiply that division by 100% to get your percentage. Now, they're giving us the percentage. They're telling us that the percent of efficiency is 85%. We've got that. Um, they're also telling us, uh, they're telling us the input, 15 joules of mechanical input. You've got to read these things carefully. Uh, 15 joules of mechanical input. So we've got our input down here of 15 joules. They're asking, what's the output? So the output up here is an unknown. I'm just going to have to put the word output up there because I don't know what it is, but it's still multiplied by 100%. Now, how to go about solving this thing? Well, I'll tell you what I would do. The first thing I would uh, get rid of is uh, is I'd take care of this percentage business and just try to get down to ordinary numbers. Now, I can do that uh, quite easily. If I get rid of this 100% here by dividing that by 100% and do the same thing over here, in other words, take this 85% and make it into a decimal. It's 0 0.85. Now, how hard is that? All you've got to do is take the decimal point and go back two spaces, and you've got 0 0.85. And now you've got rid of the whole percent thing. That equals the output divided by 15 joules of input. Okay, so we're trying to get that top number. How do we do that? Well, if you remember back uh, when we did other stuff, um, I still just showed you a really simple calculation. If I said to you that 3 is equal to 15 divided by 5, are you okay with that? And you'd say, sure. 3 is equal to 15 divided by 5. And if I circle this top number and said, how would you get that top number? How would you get that 15? You'd say, well, you multiply the, the 3 times the 5. That's how you do it. Okay, well, do the same thing here. If I circle this top number, the output, what would you do with these two other numbers? Well, exactly the same thing. You'd multiply them. If you want to find the, the output of this thing, this machine, you would take... Uh, you would take the, the decimal here, the 0 0.85, you'd multiply it by 15 joules. So we don't have to guess at this. Kids will often say, oh, I think I'll divide today. No, 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 no. Use a really simple piece of math like this to guide you, and you, you're never going to fail. So what do we get if we multiply that out? We bring up the calculator and we say, all right, if I have 0 0.85 multiplied by 15, what do I get? I get 12.75. I get 12.75 joules. And uh, how many uh, how many significant digits am I allowed to get away with? It looks like I'm only allowed to have two. So if I have to round this thing off, I guess I'm going to have to call it 13 joules to be uh, to keeping it into two significant digits. How about this one? We got a car engine that has an efficiency rating of 25%. Car engines aren't very efficient, by the way. Driving down the road, the car has a useful output of 3.7 times 10 to the fifth joules, what's the energy input? So now we're going after the input. Let's go back to the original equation. It's always good to write down your equation. The efficiency percent is equal to the output divided by the input and multiply that by 100%. All right, now what do we know? Well, we already know that the efficiency is 25%. We're also told that we have a useful output of 3.7 times 10 to the fifth joules. What we're looking for is the input. So I'm just going to have to put the word input down there because I don't know what it's worth. Still multiplied by 100%. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did in the last one. I'm going to get rid of this percent issue. I want to get that out of here. So I'm going to take this and say, look, that's 0 0.25. Move that decimal point those two places turn your percentage back into a decimal and get rid of that times 100% and your life will be a lot easier. So that's 3.7 times 10 to the fifth joules divided by the input. Okay, so now I'm trying to get that bottom number. Well, once again, look, if I said to you this simple piece of math, if I said 3 is equal to 15 divided by 5, only this time I circle the bottom number. That's the guy I don't have. What would I do with the 15 and the 3? And you'd say, 
Well, if, if you take the 15 and divide it by the 3, you'll get 5. Right. Well, do the same thing here. Here's the bottom number, right where that 5 was. What do you do in this setup? You do, you do precisely the same thing you did in the simple one. If you want to find the input, right, if you want to find the input, that, that bottom number that you see right here, you're going to take the top number, which is the uh, 3.7 times 10 to the fifth joules and you're going to divide it by that uh, decimal which is uh, the 0 0.25 and let's see what you get um, okay so 3 decimal 7 second function uh, EE uh, power is 5 and then divide that by 0 0.25 and what do we get we get a pretty big number we get one, four, eight, zero, 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 four zeros. And these are going to be joules, right? Now, that's a standardized number. Maybe it might make an awful lot more sense to convert this into a scientific number. Uh, according to the information I've got here, I'm going to have to have just two significant digits because 25% and 3.7, there's only two digits there. So I got to come up with just two digits. So it's going to be a one, and I guess the next digit's going to have to be a five. So scientific notation, 1 decimal 5. We have the decimal point going between the two of them. How far back did we have to move the decimal? Let's see. We had to go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 1.5 times 10 to the 6 joules. That was how much input we had. Lastly, a Bunsen burner supplies 4.00 times 10 to the 3rd joules of heat to a small beaker of water. And only 125 joules of heat is actually gained by the beaker and the water. Calculate the percent efficiency of the burner. Now it's going to be pretty small, that's for sure, because 125 joules out of 4.0 times 10 to the third ain't much. So here we go. Efficiency percent is equal to the output divided by the input multiplied by 100 percent okay so what do we know well we're trying to calculate the efficiency percent so that stays the uh the output well what it really did that was useful is it put 125 joules of heat into the beaker it wasn't much the input however was pretty big uh, the bunsen burner put in 4.00 times 10 to the third joules multiplied by 100 percent okay so there's our setup calculator time what do you get if you take 125 joules and you divide it by um, 4.00 second function ee third power uh, what do you get for that uh, you get uh, you get 0 0.03125 still multiplied by a hundred percent well, multiplying by 100% is a snap. All we got to do is take the decimal point and go 1, 2. So it's 3.125%. Uh, and then lastly, how many significant digits are we allowed to have? It looks like we're going to have to have only 3. So I will therefore say the answer is 3.1 and round off 3.13% to 3 significant digits.